on Monday, December 15th. <clears throat> and we are recording this meeting and ask that anyone else who's recording, let us know. Um, let's see. So first thing, approval of the minutes. Uh, let's see, the minutes were sent out by Erin. She took the minutes, took the note, notes, the first meeting. Um, let me find mine. Here we go. Any comments, questions from anyone about the minutes? They already noticed that your name is uh, misspelled, Nick. Uh, <laughs> that, that was a um, then autocorrect. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Put Mamas that? and the papas. Recent. Exactly. That's a that's a tricky one to catch. <laughs> And I didn't notice it. What do you know? <laughs> okay. Any no other comments? <clears throat> Entertain a motion to accept the minutes. I'll move to accept the minutes. A second. second. Thank you. <clears throat> All in favor? Uh, let's see. I think we have to do a roll call. Yeah, we do. Uh, let's see. So who we got here? Michelle. Uh, in favor. Aye. Aye. <laughs> Kathleen? Aye. Dan? Aye. Phil? Aye. And I'm an aye as well. So actually I said we needed three. We needed four people, which we have, thank goodness. <clears throat> We're seven people. Uh, okay, on to the next subject. The okay, I hold on for just one second, Nick? Sure. I just want to catch up for one second. Um, we have Michelle, Kathleen, Dan, you and I. Okay, and absent thus far is and Dan Schrager, right? Good, Dan. Yep. I'm here. Yep. Yeah, I th Laura's absent, and uh, okay. and Norm, and Norm. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Okay. I'm good. Thank you. You're in your role as clerk, good. So I wanted to uh, thank Melissa Southfield for coming to the meeting um, to discuss scenic roads. So uh, Melissa, could you just give us an update on what's happening with scenic roads, uh, whether or not there's gonna be a bylaw, wh where that stands? Well, um, we hope there's gonna be a bylaw, but that would depend on town meeting. Uh, the, the next step, and we don't have proper language yet, is uh, the draft warrant article at our last meeting last week for the Historical Commission. We got the town council's um, recommended warrant article uh, at very late, and none, well, we all had read it, but we really didn't have a lot of time to digest it. But even so, at our meeting, we had a number of um, suggested edits and changes and kind of replacement of it. So we will have another one presented January 13th, which I, I suspect will be much more in keeping with, I think, what the spirit of what we are trying to um, get across. I mean, <laughs> this kind of emphasized um, punishment and fines, which we're really not thinking about. That's so at any rate. Um, so, in answer to your question, you know, a town meeting is what's going to establish this bylaw. I don't know how much your committee knows about a scenic road bylaw, so I was prepared to kind of give a little, just kind of an overview of what I've done. Um, like yeah, the I, I think that would be helpful if you could give us a um, because a I think background. I think there's a lot of fear for this, and it, there shouldn't be fear. Um, so uh, again, so I'm Melissa Selfield, I'm chair of the Historical Commission, and um, as Nick says, we are proposing to. Um, put forward for town meeting a scenic road bylaw. And such a bylaw is designed to protect the rural and historic character of local roads from construction related activities. It establishes a public review process that is conducted by the planning board when work on a designated scenic road might involve cutting down or removal of trees or altering stone walls within the public right of way. The adoption of a scenic road can be initiated by the town's planning board Historical Commission or Conservation Commission. And these are the three groups under the law which may recommend local roads be designated as scenic. And that has to be put before a town meeting and passed with a majority vote. In Concord for the past 40 years or so, there have been efforts to pass such a bylaw. 
uh, for a variety of reasons, it just hasn't succeeded. But in the most recent long range plan in Vision 2030, uh, there was a call for the historical commission to review the effectiveness of the regulatory tools that we have at our disposal to better protect and preserve the town's historic character. We feel strongly that historic road protection aligns with larger efforts to protect and preserve community character and the enactment of a scenic road bylaw would add to the tools that we have available. So across the state of our Commonwealth of Massachusetts, uh, some 113 towns have adopted a scenic road bylaw, including our contiguous neighbors. Um, indeed, Carlisle adopted its first scenic roads in 1973, which is the same year that the enabling legislation at the state level was created. That is chapter 40, section 15C. Um, each town establishes its own criteria for what determines a scenic road. Uh, the Concord Historical Commission is currently reviewing criteria and a suggested list of roads that we have asked. To, there's a group of local historians that are doing work on these. Um, basically though, the criteria would focus on a road's historic importance relating to its initial creation, as well as scenic elements and the presence of stone walls and canopy trees. As I mentioned earlier, it is the planning board's uh, responsibility to, to conduct the public hearings and impose judgment. The planning board also would be responsible for creating the rules and regulation that govern the, govern the implementation of the bylaw should it pass at the 2022 town meeting. And if you're interested, there are a lot of um, samples of, of various communities, what their rules and regulations are. Um, we've kind of looked to Carlisle a fair amount because it's relatively straightforward. Um, but again, it, this is to require a public hearing. If you say you as a homeowner wanted to remove a portion of your stone wall or take down a tree within the public right of way, we would ask you to come before the planning board and explain your plan. Um, you know, and it may be that they would ask you to replace the stone wall or, you know, they'd have a discussion. The point of it is to, to try and preserve what is left of the historic character, scenic character of the, some of the roads in Concord. So that's the overview. Okay, so yeah. it's, it's going to be really, the, the planning board will determine really what the uh, criteria are, what the review. Well, yeah, although I would say we are going to recommend the criteria and the criteria is something like something, for example, this is what we drafted. Um, and it may, the first one may change, but we were trying to peg it to a, <clears throat> an historic um, map that is, we have a special collection. So for example, there's an 1852 Walling, the HF Walling map, which was a town authorized map at the time. And we we're thinking that roads that appeared on this map would be, would be one of their criteria. The other would be overall scenic beauty, the age and significance of the roads, the trees, the stone walls, road features as their historic layout, historic sites along the road, uh, some of the houses or monuments on its path, uh, and the overall contribution of stone walls and canopy trees to scenic beauty. That's, it's, that's and that is kind of consistent with most of the communities. It's, it's uh, across the state. And is so, but the planning board, uh, if someone came forward with a proposal, the planning board would have some sort of criteria for things that they just probably would never allow and things that are discussable and, you know, what. Well, uh, it would all, it would, again, it would fall under this, under this. This is pretty consistent with what is. Hi, Elizabeth, <laughs> with what is um, across the state for the criteria. Right, but, but. So you, um, Nick, if, you, if, you, if you'd like me to explain. Um, so the, the warrant article will be for, to adopt a scenic road bylaw. Um, the, the warrant article itself uh, ad adopts a scenic road bylaw pursuant to um, that particular Definitely. legislation. And uh, it lists the scenic roads that are going to be covered under that scenic road bylaw. Um, un unfortunately, the the conversation about fines is um, <laughs> is is not something that can't be done because the state legislation um, specifically states, um, you know, that there's you know there are fines associated with, um, you know, if you do something, uh, you know. 
contrary to a scenic road bylaw. So um, the fines actually have to be part of um, oh, the warrant okay. article because the town has already has a non-criminal disposition bylaw. And that's where all the non-criminal fines have to be listed. So, but that's- That wasn't this. the, obje the objection was, the way it was laid out on the piece of paper was right in the middle, a great big table. So we okay, were well, asking if it could so just that's that that's irrelevant to tonight because how, <laughs> how it gets put in the warrant is going to be completely different. Yes. Um, thank so you. the the warrant article just adopts that the scenic road bylaw and it lists those scenic roads. Um, Melissa and um, her uh, um, amazing crew of historians that are each doing uh, research on each one of the roads um, will go through and establish all of the, the reasons why um, some of the comments that Melissa made, reasons why those roads should be included in the scenic road bylaw. And that's all the, the bylaw does. Um, should the bylaw pass, the planning board side of it, if the bylaw passes, then the planning board will work with the historical commission and you know this committee, if you'd like, and the public works commission and public works staff and um, and develop rules and regulations for um, like the application and um, you know tells people here's what the public hearing which is required under the law has to happen and um, here's what you will need to do and um, discuss whether um, there's notification of abutters on the road or not the the state law is silent to that you know but does the town want to notify abutters and in practice, um, when I was in Boxborough, they've had the scenic road bylaw adopted there for um, you know, 20, probably 20 years at least. And the application comes in. So if you have a developer who um, wants to you know, develop a, a, an undeveloped piece of property and has to put in a new driveway, you know, currently there's, there's no oversight in, um, you know, they may want to demolish, you know, 22 feet of the stone wall to get in, you know, a, an 18 foot wide driveway. So the planning board would have the conversation with that, um, with that applicant saying, well, you know, to maintain the scenic character, can, you know, we reduce the opening in the stone wall and, um, and then you know reduce the pavement, and then when you get into the property, if you need something wider, so they have those conversations. Or if there is, you know, a, a thirty, you know, six inch, you know, gorgeous canopy tree, um, work with that person. Is it is it possible to, you know, let's move it down, you know, ten feet and preserve that tree? Um, so that is what happens should the scenic road bylaw pass. So the bylaw would be silent on issues like pavement markings and other such things. Uh, and it only relates to, and as long as it, uh, a project stays within the right of way, as long as it doesn't cause any harm to, to walls or stone walls or canopy trees, it's probably likely to be okay. Now, are stone well, walls- So any, any project, any project, whether it's, um, you know, a, a developer who wants to, um, you know, make changes within the road right of way and it, and it could be a scenic road, but there's no trees are being removed and there's no stone walls. Well, right. then it, it, the scenic road bylaw doesn't apply. Um, does, the same does thing the with- Does the bylaw well, tend to apply only to historic stone walls or all stone walls? Because I know, for instance, on Monument Street, where I live, there are a lot of stone walls that are obviously not historic. They're attractive, but they're not historic. Well, so it, it applies to any removal of stone walls that are on these designated scenic roads. So yeah. if somebody were to come forward and say, OK, well, you know, here's the stone wall. Somebody built it in, you know, 19, you know, 90. It's obviously it's not historic. So, you know. If they want to open up that stone wall, they're, um, you know, I'm sure the, you know, the planning board would say, go ahead and open it right there. And they, they wouldn't have to, you know, try and, um, you know, work with that 
property owner to you know, find a more suitable location. Right, okay. Okay, thank you, Elizabeth. And thank you, Melissa. Anything else, Melissa, that we're not covering or? Well, I, I, can I just um, bring up a little bit, you know, um, I think the last meeting in the Natural Resources Commission where you, you were there on that, uh, they talked about the idea of complete streets. And so I did look into more about complete streets and under the canopy of complete streets is something called context sensitive solutions. Right. Uh, and it says that context sensitive solutions is a collaborative interdisciplinary approach da, 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 um, that involves st all stakeholders in providing a transportation facility that fits its setting. The con um, context sensitive solution leads to preserving and enhancing scenic, aesthetic, historic community and environmental resources while improving safety infrastructure. So right. this is all within that. Uh, I. I mean, I think I don't want people to think we are trying to um, we're not concerned about safety. We certainly we are, but we are also trying to preserve historic character. Um, that something that is unique about Concord is its historic rural agrarian character. Yeah, agreed. And there are places where I think there may be some contention down the road because you know, there are obviously, for instance, on Monument Street, there are blind curves that are very dangerous. And unfortunately, there's something that's making that blind curve be there, like a very large tree or a stone wall or something. So, uh, but it's an interesting discussion because I uh, actually was talking with, uh, with Kathleen uh, Fasser. And uh, Kathleen, do you want to mention what you had said about road width when we were talking? Um. <clears throat> Thank you. That I have a number of thoughts on it. I think it's exciting that you're looking into it. Um, I'd like to ask a few questions, Nick, actually, before sure. um, sort of stating what I think about things. But could you walk through again um, how the, the process by which roads are going to be designated and, um, and documented as their adopted um, and should that actually be part of the process um, with after the law is in place as opposed to before and um, will if it's not then how would the public process be to weigh in on that de designation but why don't you start by helping me understand how they would be designated <laughs> well so, so and Elizabeth you can jump in at any time but we uh, this group of historians who all live in Concord, we, we have talked about, um, first of all, having read through an awful lot of other communities, it, the criteria that I suggested is co very consistent, um, not always pegging it to a specific map date, but some actually do do that, but um, everything else was pretty consistent. So we look around Concord and the uh, I can tell you the roads that are under consideration. And also to tell you, first of all, that it can only be the planning board, Historical Commission or Conservation Commission can nominate them. Um, so that's that's one by law. The other thing we we have discussed this with town council, and it was at the recommendation of town council that we would put forward the warrant article and included in that would be the first a first suggestion of roads. Um, you know what those roads are are still under discussion. So I will just tell you that the ones we're thinking of. This is in alphabetical order are Balls Hill, Barrett's Mill, Garfield, Liberty Street, Monument Street, Ornack, Old Road to Nine Acre Corner, Strawberry Hill, Sudbury Road, and Westford Road. Uh, the Melissa, future, could, I, could I just ask you to repeat that a little bit more slowly? Oh, I'm sure you're writing, I'm sorry. Balls Hill, yep. Barrett's Mill, yep. Garfield, Liberty Street, Monument, Ornack, Strawberry Hill, Sudbury, and Westford. And again, uh, these all may not make it through to the warrant. Um, and in the future, other net roads could be nominated. They all have to be passed by a majority vote, town meeting. Um, we have a group of people, so I could forward, I, I, um, after the meeting, I have, I think I have Westford Road, Monument Street, and um, Liberty that have been 
done. I mean, a, a, um, a report has been done. Research report has been done on them. I mean, they've they're they're um, you know we haven't had an editor go through them, but they're pretty um, complete, impressive documents um, that I could send to you, so you could see what kind of work is being done. The other thing, tangentially, uh, Anka Voss, who is our special collections curator at the library, has been very interested, she's mentioned this to me a number of times, that it would be really valuable to the community if we had a history of Concord's Roads. So we are thinking that this is the beginning of that, um, the work that these folks are doing on that. Uh, for town meeting, I doubt very much we'll be able to send, you know, give a document of 15, 14, 15 pages, you know, can't do that. Carmen will say, can you get one page? So we will have to, um, you know, edit that down to a very succinct couple, two or three sentences. Um, but between now and then, we obviously also will have public hearings where a lot more detail can be presented. Um, I know I babbled on. What else did you have any other questions? I'm sorry. Okay, so before, could you describe uh, you... a little bit just as a follow up how um, you described a, a nice thorough process by which you're identifying the roads? How and where or if does that align with the historic districts in the town already? It, it, the historic districts does it doesn't necessarily have anything to do with it. Okay. Because. Well, before, well, Main Street, we don't see Main Street as an appropriate scenic road. Mm -hmm. um, Sudbury Road is one of them listed. So part of Sudbury Road has as part of the HDC. Um, they're not, they're kind of two different animals. Isn't sure. it that the, uh, that the state law has different criteria for those two yes, different Yes, for sure. sure. I, I just want to understand the relationship between them. Yeah, that's all. I'd say there is none. <laughs> there is none. Okay. Yeah, that's the okay. relationship. Sure. I'm sorry, Elizabeth. So, um, thank you. What will what will likely happen for town meeting is that you're you're going to have the the warrant article, which the the warrant article itself, it very small. It's it's very small. It's it, yeah. it's it's not. It doesn't go into a, you know all of the specific detail. More than likely, what you will have is that. Um, similar to what the planning board does with um, zoning bylaw amendments, then they have you know, their town meeting handout, which has quite a bit more explanation and detail on the different items. I think what you will see is you'll have each one of these very comprehensive reports on each one of the roads on the historical commission's website. They yes. will be distilled down into, you know, probably one page for each road as a handout. Yep. And then, and then you have the warrant article. Um, each road that gets evaluated and is included in the warrant article, um, if any other new roads, somebody does new research and finds something, that has to come back to town meeting. So you can't just add roads after the warrant, um, oh, the article yeah. is adopted. Okay, thank you. That's also helpful. The one thing I'm wondering um, is in the documentation, um, is the roadway right of way being documented uh, in plan view and dimensionally? The uh, one of the historians who's working on this has been meeting with the uh, BPW, CPW uh, to get there is a map of right of ways because they vary. So yes, but you know, as um, it would come up if there was a particular hearing, they would be looking at that particular roadway, a right of way for that particular instance. So it, you know, again, it varies. And are the stone walls and trees identified on the same plan with the right of way lines? Not necessarily, no. no. I, I'm just trying, um, what I'm working in my head is um, empowering the public to understand like I said, you have a lot of great reasoning behind it. And the more um, information that's overlapped that the public can then say, oh, I, I see and understand these are the trees and walls that are in the public right away, not on private property that are making this roadway designated in this yeah. way. Well, one of, one of the people who's working on this has got someone who, I don't know if we'll be able to do it at a town meeting that 
would create um, like a PowerPoint where you can bring in the roads, you know, vi visually using your cursor. And I'm not good at that. She isn't either, but she has a friend. Um, I'm not sure that, I mean, it's a lot of work to go around because there's no map that I'm aware of that documents what, where there are scenic roads. I mean, where there are stone walls. No, it, it's like, in my experience, I've worked with public works a lot on this and uh, it's a, it takes it? a bit of digging to find the map sometimes. Because well, you're so talking, in, so in, let me, when I lived so, on Virginia Road, it was the, the, the map was a county map from around 1890. Yeah. <laughs> um, so what I, since then. So what, I, what I can um, provide everybody the knowledge. So um, engineering has um, maps for each one of the roads um, okay. that have been accepted as a public road. Um, so long as going back to whether it was a road laid out by the county commissioners and then the town took over. Um, and then, you know, after that point, all roads that became public roads had to be accepted by town meeting. So engineering has those road layout maps. Um, nobody has gone through and documented all the stone walls. Yeah. Um, what will happen is if somebody has a project where there is a stone wall and trees that have to be removed. Um, currently, if you have a project where you want to remove trees, um, those are all within um, the town's public shade tree bylaw. And the town um, tree warden goes out um, with the assistance of engineering and looking at the road layout maps. Um, goes out there and, and makes uh, an assessment of the road right of way and whether a tree is within the road right of way or not. Um, ad additionally, if somebody has um, a, a stone wall and they're doing a project, you know, they'll have a survey of their property boundaries and that survey will, you know, show the stone wall in relationship to the property boundary. There, there are some historic stone walls that aren't within the public, you know, the road right of way. That's what and I'm getting so, at. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, so those people would, they're going to have a survey um, mm -hmm. to do their project um, anyways. You know, if they're moving forward with um, a building permit and they're going to have to document their property boundaries and their setbacks. So um, mm -hmm. documentation of where that stone wall is um, will already be done. So. Mm -hmm. Um, it's it's not an it's not an ambiguous um, you know somebody you know just guesses sure. there's yep. you know there's no guessing on where the road right of way is there's um, right. different steps and different information yeah I um, I'm thinking more to uh, the def to documenting how the character and the the things that you're trying to get at and making sure sort of to um, defend the process and, and the information so that when these things come up, you can say, this is why, and this is how, and all well, of that. But it sounds yeah, like I, the process and is I think, ongoing. Yeah. I think when you, when you get um, the, you know, the copy of like the first couple of reports that have already been done on these roads, um, all that, doc all those photos and documentation and documentation of walls and trees and markers and monuments. And that's all part of that report, which that's I great. think is gonna be needed um, if, the pro if this warrant article moves forward, people can see this and understand why they're being, these roads are being included in the, in the warrant. Okay. Uh, Thank you. Any, any other questions from the committee? Okay. Well, thank you, Elizabeth, and thank you, Melissa. It was very helpful, very helpful. Thank you. Great. Have a good night, everyone. Thanks. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, let's see. Moving on. Um, reformatory Branch Trail. Oh, boy. <laughs> Big topic. So uh, I've uh, sent, I did a presentation today, a slide, little slideshow. The reason I put this on was there seems to be a lot of energy uh, around this topic, and it was one of the ones that Terry Ackerman <clears throat> indicated was of some interest in the near future for the select board. So today, at least, I wanted to see if we could get some facts on the table and start to put out some thoughts about this. Um, so Erin is going to share, share her screen. Um, 
go back to the first page. Uh, oh no, first page. Where's the first page? This is way in. You, you're on the last page. Uh, go way back to the first page. Way, way back. Way, way back. Way, way back. Way, way back. It's like 15 slides. Are <laughs> Here we go. Okay. So the first thing was um, in this age of truthiness to uh, see if we could get some facts out on the table that we might be some general agreement about. So <laughs> started with the Man Bikeway. There is a paved Minuteman bikeway that starts at Alewife and ends at Bedford Depot. This is a pretty well accepted fact. Next slide. The unpaved reformatory branch trail goes from Bedford Depot. Now this says to Lowell Road. It actually goes to the, to the near the confluence of the Assabet, Sudbury and Concord rivers. Uh, although the portion that ends at Lowell Road is really the most um, heavily used and um, flattest and, you know, it's just more like the old railroad that was there. The remaining part isn't so much like that. It's more like a walk in the woods. Uh, the next slide. Okay, the state plans to pave the Bedford portion. Now the truth here is it's actually Bedford that's running the project, but the state is gonna spend the money. Uh, so uh, Bedford is going to with state assistance, pave the Bedford portion of the uh, reformatory branch trail from Bedford Depot to an area just beyond Route 62. The Concord so Town here, line here, is a little further. Could I, yeah, could I just jump in? Um, yeah. Some of the things that you've said are not entirely true, but I'll oh, good. go back to it. Oh, good. Okay? That's why they're out there. So go ahead. Uh, bed, it, this is a mass dot project. It's not a Bedford project at this point in time. Oh, that's interesting. Another a town department had told me it was a state money and Bedford's running the project. So that is incorrect. Mass dot is running the project. And okay. Um, was there another factual correction? Um, there is a section of the trail that. Uh, go ahead. Okay. Actually, Nick, there there is one one flaw there, I think. Um, it says that it's to be paved to an area just beyond Route 62. Last I heard, there was supposed to be a terminus at Bonnyvale Road, I believe, in Bedford, which is on, it's on 62. So it wouldn't actually continue across 62. That's also um, not correct, Dan. There's a <laughs> tunnel that would go underneath Route 62, approximate, and then the paved portion would be approximately 200 feet north and west of Route 62. So Phil, have you got a document or have you seen it? Could you get a copy of a document that so says that? Yes, um, okay. and I can show that to you. Okay, great. Okay, so I'll we'll get, get that some, So we'll try to nail down exactly where the plan ends and who's running the project. Okay, next slide. Some have just suggested paving the Concord portion of the reformatory branch trail. Now, I believe this is a fact that has been suggested at times by people. Uh, it may have been an offhand comment. It may have been a serious suggestion that had some heft behind it. But um, I believe that what has happened so far, there have been suggestions and nothing stronger than that. Next slide. And this, I have run this by people in Concord Town government. There is no plan on offer by the state or any town department to pave the Concord portion of the trail. If you think there is one, bring it forward in writing. Okay. Okay, so now we're on to another set of statements that are maybe a little less certain, maybe they're not. So these are maybe more contentious. The trail is in use, and I believe it's among the most heavily used trails in town, just because of its location and its character. It's an old railroad bed, it's fairly flat. Um, you know, it doesn't have any steep grades in it because the old steam engines didn't like those. Um, and it's just, it is a trail of significance. Next slide. People have commented on the condition of the trail, that there are problem sections for any intended use, places that get muddy, places that have other issues. Um, 
So I believe it's true that the trail is not in perfect condition uh, for, for many uses, some uses at, at any rate. Next slide. There is no town department responsible for upkeep and management of the trail. Now, what's true is that natural resources and public works jump in when there's a problem. And, you know, if equipment is needed to remove a large downed tree, uh, public works will get involved and see that that happens. Uh, there's uh, Bill Robichaud, who I understand is a trail steward, does a lot of work of, on his own uh, under the aegis of the trails committee. Uh, but uh, he does, has done work to maintain portions of the trail. But again, he's not part of town government. So there is no town department it fits in. I, I think what happened was that uh, when the rail line was abandoned, uh, the, the title to it wound up in the name of the select board. And the select board, unlike, for instance, a conservation easement where the title is passed on to the Natural Resources Department, it's the, the title so-called stayed with the select board. Next slide. There are various opinions on what purposes the trail might serve, but no formal statement of purpose. So for instance, is this trail, what kind of trail is this? Is this a trail for bicycles? Is this a trail for travel? Is this a trail for casual walking? Is it some, is it a few of those things? If you're gonna do anything with this trail or maintain this trail or enhance this trail, you have to know why the trail exists and what purposes we want it to serve. Okay, next. How, okay, so that's the situation. It's sort of an orphan in a sense. It's looked after by some departments and some people because it's a, it's a, it's a good place. Oh, one thing we might do is determine an appropriate statement of purpose or purposes for the trail. Now, I'm not gonna say at this point how that might happen, but I think if we're gonna do, if the town's gonna to do anything, we gotta figure out why we want this trail and what purposes we want it to serve. Next, uh, find a home for the trail. <laughs> I think someone in town government needs to feel responsible for this trail in the sense that they own it and they identify with it. And it's not just something that's done out of the goodness of a department heads hard to, you know, to maintain something they aren't personally responsible for. Next slide. And then once someone owns it and we know why it's there, let's assess its condition to support the stated purposes. So for instance, is it good enough for a regular road bicycle to use if we want kids on bicycles to be able to get from one of the more densely populated parts of town uh, over near Route 62, old, around Bedford Road, Bedford and Old Bedford Road, uh, Prescott Road, those areas down to the center of town. Uh, you know, it would need to have certain characteristics. It certainly wouldn't need to be paved, but it might need a better surface than it has now. And next, develop a plan with costs for implementation and maintenance. Maintenance part is often left out in in any town government, state government, federal government, and show alternative design approaches. For instance, if you develop a plan, as soon as you put the plan out and say, this is the kind of surface we're gonna have, you're gonna get a lot of questions about, well, why that surface? So I think the plan has to indicate what sorts of surfaces, what types of drainage techniques would be used so that the, so that the people in the town can say, yeah, that makes sense, or no, why don't you do this instead? And next, all of this will require funding. So um, that's it. So any questions, comments, complaints from the public or the board member, the com uh, committee members? Um, so before we get started too far, I have the plan that you had asked me about at Route 62. So I'm not sure if I can share the screen, but I could try. Um, just so everybody's had a chance to see it. Does that work? Do you have to empower him, Erin? Yep. One second.
you should be able to share now. Okay, all right. I think it just helps to see this. Okay. Uh, bear with me for one second. Can everybody see this? Yes. yes. Okay. Uh, so uh, what you're looking at is the 75% um, design plan, um, which is being managed uh, by MassDOT uh, for the town of Bedford and for this project. Um, the notations are added by me, just so that you are clear about that. Um, you can see at the bottom, uh, heading to your left is heading um, east towards Bedford. Uh, you can see heading west towards Concord. So that's kind of north and west. Uh, and at a diagonal, that's Route 62. To the left of um, Route 62 on this plan is where there's a little parking lot right now. It's a like a dirt uh, parking area and there's a kiosk with the sign there. Um, and what this diagram is showing is that um, the path of the uh, paved portion of the reformatory branch trail will go underneath Route 62 in its current location there'll be a culvert, uh, which will be inserted uh, in that location. Uh, I don't know if folks are familiar with the culvert um, in the Minuteman National Park, uh, which- uh, At Hanscom Drive? Uh, at Hanscom that's Drive. That's close to there, yeah. Goes that's up. right at Hanscom Drive. Yeah. It goes under Hanscom Drive. Yeah. Right, um, so this would be, um, you know, the idea of it is similar, but it would be a more substantial um, uh, uh, basically a concrete structure which would go under the road because it has to bear the weight of um, truck traffic going on Route 62. Um, so uh, where you see the notation where it says end of asphalt, um, I had a conversation with the project manager at MassDOT um, and uh, basically we eyeballed it and the distance between the edge of Route 62 right of way and where it says edge of asphalt is about 200 feet. And then uh, below that, you can see another dashed line. And what that is, is basically a turnaround. What the representative from MassDOT explained to me was that, um, that paved portion of the project would end at Route 62 uh, because uh, of the requirements of the Amer Americans with Disabilities Act. Um, from MassDOT's interpretation of the federal act, um, there's a, uh, there has to be kind of a logical ending point for people so that if people are disabled, um, they don't end up at a dead end without a kind of return to um, uh, an area where they can uh, get transportation. So uh, that's what the design is intended to do. It's intended to bring people back up to the public way in a manner that's um, similar to how the, um, there's a switched back, um, uh, ending at Powder Mill Road for the Bruce Rumen Rail Trail at present. And the reason why that switchback um, uh, path was installed was again, also to satisfy Americans with Disabilities Act requirements uh, at that location. So that's, that, that's the purpose of that. Um, east, uh, west of this location, um, I think the town of Bedford um, would make a determination as to how they're going to um, uh, handle the trail. And uh, it is approximately 800 feet between where the end of pavement would be and the Bedford-Concord town line. Okay. 
Thank you, Phil. So okay. do I have to do something or can you just turn this off, Aaron? I oh, I see. I have to stop share. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Phil. Okay. Yeah. A lot, a lot of misunderstanding about what the plan actually shows, and that's the current uh, plan. Okay. Could you, uh, could you supply us with uh, the name of that plan and the date of it or something so that we can post that? Uh, yeah. I'll get you. I'll get you the name of the plan, and also uh, the staff person at MassDOT who is the project manager. Okay. You just put that in the minutes for this meeting. I think yeah. that will be fine. Okay, Ned Perry has a question. Good evening, Mr. Chair. Ned Perry, 362 Bedford Street, Concord, Mass. Uh, it's not a question, Mr. Chair. It's um, sort of a appalling gasp. Um, I, I invite you to take a look at the transportation issues in town that are significant for the entire town, not for the few people who walk the reformatory branch or even who ride the reformatory branch. And I invite you to look or talk with the Natural Resources Commission and see if they don't have a trails committee underneath their jurisdiction. And underneath the jurisdiction of the trails committee are the trail stewards, which Bill Robichaux is an excellent one. And, and for you to claim that this trail doesn't belong to any town committee or town board is, is, is astonishing. I, 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 with all your experience on the long range planning and on this, this leadership position, I, I invite you to look at broad issues for the town, not, not neighborhood issues. Uh, this, this, this trail has been maintained by Will Robichaux well the, tra um, our, our, the chair of the trail committee, Bob White, is on this. I invite you to tell Bob White that he's not associated with any town department. Uh, he has maintained trails throughout the town and, and maintained them well. Thank goodness for our trails pro process. Uh, Bob White, Bill Robichaud, and I went through a chainsaw class a week ago Friday. We didn't do it individually. We did it because of the Natural Resources Commission wanting us to do it as trail stewards. So I, I, I'm offended by your suggesting that the trail committee and the trail stewards isn't part of a town department and that a town department is not maintaining our trails. Let's get on with the transportation issues, the busing, the, 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 uh, uh, the roads, our traffic, our visitors. Uh, and, and where people are going to park uh, when they come to town. And, 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 and please don't tell Bill Robichaud that he's not maintaining this reformatory branch trail in a good condition. It's rideable. It's walkable. I did interviews out there a month and a half ago, and everybody said it's great. The, the, the cross-country team that came by said, please don't change it. A lady, on, an elderly lady on a bike said, oh my goodness, please don't change it. I don't want people going any faster here. I, I, I just don't understand why you are, why you are narrowing the con this transportation advisory committee down to this little issue uh, and, 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 and uh, not taking a broader perspective, as I said in a letter to you um, over the weekend. Thank you very much for the time. Thank you, Ned. The fact that we put this on as an agenda item does not mean it constitutes the entire scope of this committee. I also spoke with Delia before this meeting and she agrees that the trails uh, committee does help out and her department does help out, but it is not formally responsible for this trail. Okay. Nick, why isn't it formally responsible for the trail? because it's basically formally responsible for all trails on conservation land. This trail is not on conservation land. So, you, you know, that could, could change, that could change, it could be changed, but at the moment, that's the way it is. And I was just trying to report the facts as they are. Nick, could we discuss it, um, the committee discuss it a little bit before we open it up to more public comment? Sure, um, I, Yeah, I have some thoughts to share. 
and I appreciate you summarizing sort of all the various things that have been brought up and, you know, some of them are uh, true or false or some version that people have heard and there's a lot of conversation about it, but I appreciate you trying to distill it for everybody. Um, I appreciated particularly the comment that you let us all know, which is there are no plans for trail improvements on the from the reformatory branch trail. The, the town does not have any. Um, and I think under that understanding and the fact that we have been charged with a number of other things, um, while I appreciate the suggestion of doing a very thorough analysis and coming up with plans and everything, if it's not on the plans and it hasn't been requested of us and it's not an envision, um, I, I don't see the need to spend the committee's time on trying to improve a trail no one's really asking to improve. Um, it's, it's nice what Bedford's doing, but our charge isn't, doesn't really have anything directly related to that, except to coordinate if it's part of something we're trying to accomplish, which we have yet to, as a committee, to kind of come up with. So I would like to suggest tabling this um, and appreciating all of the information and input we've gotten from the public. Um, it's a treasured and cared for trail. I know this because I do live near it, um, but it's not on our to-do list, so to speak. And um, I think that there's a lot of other things that, um, we could work on. So that those oh, are my thoughts. Thank uh, the you one very much. Thing, the one thing I'd add to what you say is trails are very specifically mentioned in the Envision Concord plan and in the transportation section. So it does fall under our writ. Whether we do much with it or not is going to be up to us in the select board. Understood. I just meant this particular connection. Right. Yes. Well, Nick, I mean, the observation I have is that Bedford is kind of giving us that they're putting this at our front door. So mm -hmm. they're spending lots of money to put a culvert under Route 62. They're paving 400 feet, uh, clearing 200 feet and paving 400 feet to have effectively a dead end with a turnaround. And it's going to dump it into right at the Concord line. So much as, you know, Kathleen, I, I know it's not right at our doorstep yet, but, Kath, but Bedford is, is kind of um, putting us in a position that we have to at least examine it. I think you're absolutely right in examining a connection to that point to, it, to downtown um, Concord, um, but that is a feasibility study that includes many alternatives, not necessarily the reformatory branch trail at all. So um, I certainly wouldn't let that tail wag the dog. The dog. It, it doesn't seem prudent or in line with what we're being asked to do. Let me see, uh, Richard Follender. I think Michelle had a... Oh, I'm sorry, Michelle. Okay. My bad, go ahead, Michelle. Sorry, thanks. Um, no, I, I, was, um, I, I was in a similar place as maybe Kathleen and Dan in that I think um, I, I really liked what you proposed in terms of actions, Nick. I um, I think my only question was exactly like um, exactly what was noted, which is I feel like I would feel feel better if we had sort of a roadmap for you know how we're going to prioritize um, sort of the work that this committee does um, and how we um, sort of how we organize ourselves against that roadmap, and then. You know, then I think it, I feel like it would be easier then to come back to this as an issue to say, oh, you know, either yes, actually that does fit into the roadmap and sort of the bigger issues that we've identified as part of the 2030 um, plan, um, or it's out of scope for whatever reason. So I, I feel like I'm a, I'm in a similar place where it feels like we could table it while we work out um, sort of the broader broader remit and roadmap and the actions that we feel we should take and then revisit it in that context. Um, so that was just, just my thoughts to build on that. Good, okay, thank you. <clears throat> Richard? Hi, uh, yeah, I'm Richard Fallender, 399 Old Bedford Road. I'm also a member of the Bruce Freeman Rail Trail Advisory Committee and I'm speaking uh, on my own. Um, over a year ago, uh, 
uh, Ned, uh, Nat Welch and I, who are, who's also a member of the committee, had some discussions about the reformatory branch and uh, had some early discussions about whether the rail trail committee could expand its um, charge to do, to take a look at the reformatory branch. That didn't happen. And now we're at this point. I, I do applaud um, the, the chair for presenting, I think a very succinct and comprehensive uh, place of where we are. And, and a year ago, I think that myself and some others basically were saying the same thing that as, as, um, as Dan mentioned, you know, Bedford's knocking at the door and that there are uh, competing uses now on the trail, which could be exacerbated into the future. And consequently, you know, I, during that process, I looked at a 1995, I think it was study that looked at biking and Concord and it specifically looked at a formatory branch and it specifically discouraged the notion of using it as a, as a trail for commuting or for bicycling and suggested improvements to route 62. Um, of course, those were never done. So I also appreciate people thinking that this is simply a, a little, little project in the scope of the world, which it is. But I also think that if we're going to um, realize that there are a lot of neighbor kids or a lot of neighbor folks or people from out of town who are going to be using the trail and arriving on a paved trail to Concord, if we can't, if we decide the formatory branch is, is fine the way it is, then we need to look at the broader picture. And I agree with that. You know, living on Old Bedford Road, I, I, I have a particular interest in other aspects of what your committee is doing vis-a-vis -vis speed limits, uh, traffic calming measures, et cetera. And so I look forward to you addressing those over the time. But specifically on the reformatory branch, I think that the um, to, to do nothing, as the 1995 plan said from Concord, uh, is, is not really an option at this point. Uh, it, it's so, to be responsible. I think we need to have leadership to, to take a look at this. Whether this committee is the one who does it, I think the select board hopes that it is. Um, I think, again, I, I really appreciate, Nick, what you've done to lay out the situation. And I hope it's the first step in, in coming to, to a, a, a chance to really in, enhance the, the trail for everyone. And I don't know if Bill Robichaud is going to speak for himself, but I'll, I will and, and say that, you know, the idea that we're, we're having this major trail maintained by a, a volunteer individual to me just isn't is sustainable, uh, a sustainable way to look at it. So thank you very much. And, and I appreciate everybody's time on the committee and what you're doing to improve uh, safety around town. Thank you so much. Thank you, Richard. Mr. Kemp. Yeah, thank you. Uh, my name is Nate Kemp. I'm at 59 Mallard Drive. Uh, I'd like to also echo the uh, gratitude toward Bill and the, uh, the volunteers that maintain the trail. Um, they do a great job with their with their shovels uh, and their rakes and their leaf blowers. Um, but I think uh, it's pretty clear to many people that use the trail that uh, there are significant maintenance related components to that trail, which simply cannot be done by volunteers and manual labor. Um, and by that, I mean areas where the drainage needs to be improved with, um, with larger tools that only uh, town government, uh, you know, and funded town government uh, projects can can work on, and and those impact safety. They impact um, the enjoyment of the trail. Um, if uh, if an otherwise nice dry walk is made, uh, you know, uh, into a mud fest because there's a, a twenty or thirty meter long stretch of trail that is perpetually uh, moist. Um, I think that's a a maintenance problem and we should address it, not just say that nothing has to be done to a trail to improve uh, the quality of that trail. So um, whether it's uh, this committee or some other committee in town um, that, that takes charge of this trail and, and what we do about it in the future, uh, something needs to be done. Um, now, uh, as a transportation committee, I think it makes sense uh, and I would urge the people on this committee to take a very transportation focused view of what needs to happen with that trail. Um, there are other committees in town uh, that can focus on recreational elements of it, on environmental elements, 
um, a whole host of other voices that need to be heard and that can be heard. Um, but going forward, uh, you know, if, if the select board and the town manager need to hear um, from the public uh, about what transportation related topics are involved in this trail, it makes sense that this committee is the one that should take that up and become the expert on how that trail is used for transportation vis-a-vis uh, -vis the economic um, reasons that people use that, whether it's commuting to work or getting to the grocery store um, or any other, uh, any other reason that doesn't just involve um, a nice walk in the woods uh, for recreation or um, you know, uh, a place to walk your dog. Um, so that's all I have to say, thanks. Thank you, Nate. Mark Galis. Thank you very much. Thank you, Nick. Thank you, committee members and uh, <clears throat> everybody here. So um, I just wanted to say a couple things. Um, if, for anybody who's not you, familiar, please. Oh, Mark Galis, 62 Prescott Road. You probably have that on some documents. <laughs> um, Thank you. Any, anyway, the, um, uh, uh, <clears throat> for people who are not familiar with the trail, uh, there's a really wonderful trail guide uh, linked um, uh, on the town website, uh, Natural Resources Division, et cetera. And um, if, you, if you look at it, it actually says, and I don't know where the um, exact, uh, hold on one second. I don't know where the um, uh, full detail is, but it says that um, <clears throat> in 1962, uh, Boston and Maine abandons it uh, between Bedford and Concord Center. Concord purchased the section adjacent to the Great Meadows National Wildlife Refuge to be maintained as a buffer or protection strip and to be used as a path overlooking the marsh. So I don't know if there were conditions uh, at the time of acquisition of any time or intention state or whatever. I know that the um, people at the Great Meadows were initially very concerned when they heard that Bedford was going to pay for the Concord line because that would touch the Great Meadows. Uh, the fact that they're, they have a little bit less immediately concerned because the paving is um, you know, due to that federal funding uh, limitation kind of chain around the ankle of, of what you can do, says you have to terminate on pavement. Um, they're a little less concerned now, but if Concord wanted to uh, pave, mm -hmm. there would be a lot of um, <clears throat> concerns from the Federal Wildlife Preserve. Um, another thing I wanted to mention uh, is just that I think um, there's outside pressures where somebody looks at a line on a map, like the Massachusetts planning, uh, 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 you know, Massachusetts Area Planning um, Commission and other groups um, uh, from out of state. They look at a line on the map and they say, oh, they're, the, they're all the same. But if you know the place yourself, if you've been there, you know that there's something very precious here. And um, fast bikes on a hard surface would just displace not only wildlife, cut apart the environment there, but displace current users and future users. So um, I think we gotta be very careful, but certainly providing uh, better drainage, stable surface, et cetera, uh, makes a lot of sense. If, if we, I, it's my understanding that if we make it conservation land, the DCR can provide funding for natural trail uh, surface and maintenance. Thanks. Thank you, Mark. Uh, Okay, Nate, you still got your hand up, um, and Mark. Yep. Okay. Oh, sorry about that. I'm not sure exactly how to put it down. Oh, down at the bottom where it says reactions. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> okay. Thanks. Yeah, I just learned that too. <laughs> okay. Um, anyone else? Any comments? Okay. Seeing none, uh, we will wrap up that portion of Wait, the discussion. I got one more comment before you go. Oh, go ahead, Phil. I, I will put a copy of the deed from uh, the B&M to the town in the packet for folks to take a look at. Okay, do we, <laughs> since you bring that up, has anyone done a search to see if there are any restrictions put on it after the deed was registered? There's no restrictions on the deed. Currently. There is a, there, there, the deed um, was, um, uh, was crafted so that it, was uh, it would provide that the, the town could put its sewer line uh, down the right of way. Right. So okay. uh, 
there is a, presently a sewer line that runs from uh, Monument Street down to the sewer treatment plant. Okay, great. Can I send yeah, me yeah, I'll send that to you. Thank you. Okay, uh, moving on. Uh, good discussion. That achieved what I wanted. Thank you. Um, I think uh, what we have to do, uh, as Ned suggested, is we have to see where this fits in our priorities. And perhaps more important, uh, because the select board had indicated some concern about this issue, we have to understand where it fits in their priorities and uh, what they think we should be doing about it. But that is the way we see it at the moment, Terry Ackerman. Um, okay, moving on. Um, discuss values and principles to guide our work. Okay, so um, you know this area we're dealing with, transportation and mobility, is huge, and um, it covers, as Ned suggested, there are many, many, many aspects of it. Many places where we need to stick our nose, whether it's uh, parking or traffic safety and speed limits, traffic calming, uh, shuttle buses, uh, ways of getting around town, how we interface to the commuter rail, first mile, last mile. It's just, you know, it's a huge space. And, you know, eventually we get to a point where we might want to make recommendations about something. And, you know, I think the first thing we need is to understand what values and principles we're dealing with here. And Envision Concord was, was pretty clear on some of these points. Um, I might have missed some, but the ones that always jump out at me are you know, respect for sustainability, the environment, uh, Concord's historic nature, that those are things that are very important to keep in mind with what we're doing. Um, I might have missed one there. Please pipe up someone if you recall one. But um, there are other things, sort of more detailed principles, um, or I don't know, some of them are just thoughts at the moment, but and, um, I'll have one. So this is sort of down in the weeds a bit, but I tend to think traffic calming is a lot more effective than speed limits. <laughs> speed limits aren't enforced. So, you know, th th those are little ones like that, but, you know, there are things that we need to help sort of send us in certain directions when we're, we're considering what what to do with a road or you know, what to do with a method of transportation. At any rate, so um, I just intended this as an open discussion to start what would be a long uh, continued revisit to what values and principles should be guiding our work. So, and if no one wants to say anything, we'll just think about it and bring it up at the next meeting. <laughs> I, uh, I would just, I think it's a great, um, I think it's a really important place to start. Um, so I'm glad you, I'm glad you raised it. And I think, um, I mean, with that in mind, I think it would be great to, I, I mean, I would propose that we could all do some homework and maybe capture, kind of come, um, either come with ideas or, or capture that um, and make it a bigger, um, a bigger topic next time. But I think it's, um, yeah, I think it's a great idea. It's an important foundation. Okay, thank you. Nick, so, I would just be remiss if I didn't say to make sure equity is on the list, you know, for- Oh, you're right, absolutely. Yes. I left that off, that's my <laughs> yeah. bad, yes. Everything okay. from social, economic ability. Yeah, let me, let me expand upon well, that a little bit because in developing the Envision Concord plan, um, that one came up a lot. And, you know, Concord is a town where a lot of people own two or three cars for all the kids and the family members. And nonetheless, there are people in town who have trouble affording a car or can't afford a car. And providing mobility for, for everyone in town, whether they're economically or physically or otherwise disadvantaged, is an important part of what we need to do. So, for instance, things like some forms of public transportation or buses might be an important part of that. Um, you know, being able to get around on a bicycle might be in a very important part of that for some people. And it's so age, that's another thing. Either, you know, if you're young and you can't drive, <laughs> a bicycle is about the only thing you've got left unless someone wants to give you a ride. Um, uh, so yeah, equity is an extremely important one. And if I may, um, I just want to 
jump in here. The there we have a transportation uh, study survey going on right now. That if anybody um, knows anybody who does not use a car or doesn't feel comfortable or can't afford a car, we're trying to uh, capture their voices in that survey to make sure that we are. Um, really getting their opinion on how they want to get around, how they get around currently, how they'd like to get around. Uh, so if you would like, I can send that around. It's also available on um, the town's website, our social media channels. Um, it's been floating around, but if you, if you would like, I can also send where, that around. Where do you find it on the website, Erin? Um, it was sent out in a news and notice. I'd have to go and find where I put it on the actual website. I can also put it on the Transportation Advisory Committee's webpage, if that'd be easier. Please do, please. Yeah. Great. Uh, okay. Nick, I've got a comment. Yeah, Phil. Um, so um, I, I wanted to just make sure that um, when we're talking about this and talking about equity, um, we're including people who have disabilities uh, as part of that conversation. Uh, I think that's always part of uh, an important part of the conversation. Um, and I also wanted to channel Laura. Um, uh, Laura mentioned, um, I believe at the last meeting, um, that uh, it made sense to examine the sustainability uh, goals and um, the town sustainability, um, uh, I guess it's an action plan, um, included specific um, items which um, relate to transportation, which um, I think we can examine. And to the extent that as part of our big picture, we try to harmonize uh, our uh, thoughts with the, the town sustainability goals. I think that would be uh, appropriate. Okay. Sounds, sounds like this is, um, I'm trying to imagine how to go forward with this, but it's, it's, Complicated isn't the right, it's complex. <laughs> there are a lot of aspects of this, a lot of dimensions to this whole area. So I think it's gonna take a continued discussion as we try to uh, map the boundaries and then the interconnections among these things and figure out how to distill that into something that will provide us with some guidance. Nice general statement anyway. <laughs> so um, I'm, I put a list, um, Anything else on values, principles, anything to guide our work? Mark, Galis? Mark, you have your hand up? I Did have you? my hand up, yeah, thanks very much. No, I was just gonna, um, while you were talking about the, um, uh, Phil was talking about the accessibility, I just wanna remember I've heard from a number of people about, um, you know, I know it's a out of town concern, but it's an in town concern, handicap accessibility at Toro Depot. Uh, you know, they, they have, they, I mean, the, for a lot of people, the train is one of the reasons they live in Concord. For some people, right. sorry, you can't, you know, you can't get We have there. accessibility in West Concord at the platform, but not in the Concord Depot. No, right. not at Concord Depot. And there's a lot of stuff to talk about Concord Depot right now. So might not be a bad time to push for it. Good point. Thank you. Good point. Okay. Okay, yeah, that's another thing that came up uh, this week. Um, I mentioned on the, did I mention? Yeah, Thoreau Depot Business District. Um, we need to get involved in that. Um, maybe if someone feels particularly like diving into it, um, I, a couple of quick questions come up. They're proposing some, you know, major changes, which um, I'm sure some people support and some people don't support. Some questions I have are right now where I believe they're planning, the plan would put some buildings, um, there's commuter parking. <laughs> and uh, commuter parking is really a, a great shortage of it in all of the Western suburbs and Concord in particular. Um, so I have a question about that, the loss of commuter parking spaces. Uh, I have a question about uh, the reason the development is being suggested or that whole program is underway is to place housing near uh, things like commuter rail stations, transportation hubs, so that people don't need a car so much and so they can get to the city from out here. Um, that's a good part of it. Uh, the, the, the issue that uh, Mark just brought up, which is uh, 
if we're going to have accessibility at that train through that train station, we really should have better access to the trains for people with disabilities. And uh, I don't know. Uh, it just seems that one we should be looking at that since that is such a hot topic in the town right now, we should be looking at the Thoreau Business District plans to understand what our questions should be. So is anyone particularly interested in digging into that? So I can jump in because I've been helping in on the Throw Depot Business District's um, work. Um, I just want to start off by saying it's not a it's not a project or um, something that's going forward as a, um, a development. It's rather um, putting together zoning regulations so that things could change, so that they could, for instance, um, redevelop a parcel or something like that. Um, it's not a plan to. Um, I've heard people say that, you know, it's a plan to knock down Crosby's market and put up a giant <laughs> right. apartment building. It's not, the, there's no plan to do that. There's nothing like that. Um, it's purely um, making it so that things can be redeveloped in the future and that there are the opportunities to, to make changes. Um, right. I would encourage anybody who's interested to definitely go to the public forum tomorrow. It's going to be both virtual and in person. Um, it's at 6.30, I believe. Um, and it's also going to be recorded for anybody who wants to go and watch it back later. Um, there's also a bunch of information on the town's website. You can go to concordma.gov slash throw depot. And that is the shortened link. So um, Aaron, do you know, you may not know, but uh, I certainly don't know. The, typically zoning includes, uh, when you're doing developments like that, it includes uh, statements about how much parking is required. Um, is that part of the zoning proposal? I don't want to speak out of turn. I believe that uh, one of the things they're talking about is um, to lower the parking requirements for housing units, I think. Right, right. So that should be, be part of the proposal. To be one and a half per unit instead of the re typically required two because they are so close to the commuter rail station. Um, another issue with the commuter rail station right there is that is state owned property, it is MBTA. Um, so I don't believe that the town itself can necessarily make any changes to the, to the stop. It's, it's directly coming from the state. All those changes have to be made that way. So, right, but um, since it's all part of a state thrust to try to do this kind of housing, it would make right. sense for the state to support changes to the platform, putting <laughs> the platform. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. All right. Yeah. So. Okay. Then, well, whoever can, let's all. Yes, Phil. I have a question for Aaron. Um, Aaron, is um, is the proposal? For the changes to the zoning, something that's being um, motivated by the state. I know that the state has changed Chapter 40A to, um, I think, encourage municipalities to, to make some changes to zoning, but is there some pressure from the state to, to do that? If... I don't like what. Well... Like I said before, I don't want to speak out of turn. I, I haven't been involved in, since the very beginning. I've been helping more towards the end of this project. Um, but my understanding is there, you know, there are some changes that are coming with um, there's affordable housing guidelines that they want to have a certain amount of housing um, close to MBTA stations now. Um, I forget what the radius is and things like that. But I know that that is, you know, one thing that they're looking at, but there's also uh, there looking to ensure that when redevelopment wants to happen in the area, if, you know, they want to make it more walkable, they want it so that people, it's a, you know, it's a vibrant um, community center like Concord Center and like uh, West Concord Center, where people come and they walk around and they shop and they can also live in the area. They want to have that sort of mixed use in the Throw Depot area, which there is some of now, but they want to see if, you know, if there are other opportunities for things in the future to grow, because um, our community, you know, it continues to grow. And so we want to make sure that we're prepared for the future is what is what my understanding is. You're muted, Nick. And certainly many towns are behaving as if the state were at least strongly encouraging them to make these changes. I mean, Concord isn't the only one doing this. 
Okay, so uh, so we should do a little homework on this Thoreau Business District. Um, and it seems to me it should be on an agenda fairly soon so we can um, give our advice. Okay, um, okay. I think that's pretty much it. Was there anything else on the future topics anyone wanted to discuss? I, I just I have a question, um, Nick, just a, about whether as a future topic, we could sort of discuss the, you know, how we refresh um, the Envision Concord 2030, if, if any refreshing needs to be done, by the way, in terms of, uh, I think, updated studies things like that, um, particularly after COVID, given I think it's not that we're out of it yet, but it's changed a lot of um, be behavior potentially or continue, continue to. Um, and, um, and then also how we just, how we sort of break, break that down um, to tackle that as a plan, um, but then also, um, you know, potentially how we organize ourselves. So for example, you know, I think there's some, there seemed to be sort of the longer the longer term outlook, which is sort of the, the plan that we work towards in terms of like sort of delivering on the 2030 plan. But then also it feels like there's a lot of um, you know near term things that come up that need attention or um, you know so I wonder if there are ways to either organize ourselves or you know have have people thinking about different parts. Um, so that we can come back together and, you know, help whether it's, you know, make recommendations, et cetera. So um, just I'd love to discuss that maybe a bit more. Yeah, I think we need, we need some structure. Uh, we need to be able to keep these things in balance and keep track of them. So I think that's going to be the short term challenge for the next meeting or two or three till we start to get that sort of structure to help us figure out where we are and how we're going to move. Uh, and Nick, I, I'm happy to, um, no, that's all right. I, I was just going to say, Nick, I'm happy to um, format what I said it was, I had already started to do, which is right along what Michelle was doing. I started putting all of the, all of the Envision tasks into sort of piles of implementation. Right. We need to study it. We need a plan or a position. And um, so I'm happy to be prepared if you want to put it on the agenda to put something up that we can all bounce ideas off of um, as a starting place. Right. That would be um, really helpful, Kathleen. Yeah, that, yeah. That, that's wonderful. Start, yeah. that's a great place to start. Okay, great. Um, the one I would say, echoing what Michelle said, I mean, the, when we were doing the, uh, the Envision Concord plan, one of the huge transportation issues in Concord was traffic. And, you know, there's still some tra there are some traffic issues, but it is so much less than it used to be. So that's an example of something that sort of would shift the priorities, at least, you know, perhaps considerably. So, okay. Uh, Terry, any comments? Terry Ackerman, any comments or observations? Yes, thank you. Um, great meeting, really great. And, um, I, I think that your presentation on the reformatory trail was really one of the best presentations I've seen. It really hit all the high points. And yet um, it's also true that this committee is involved with many more issues besides just the reformatory trail. So I particularly like that you're going to be discussing the values and principles. Uh, I think that's really important to try to figure out how to prioritize. You have so many different things to work on and um, looking at the potential topics for future meetings. Um, and then I have an important question. So right before we reconstituted the Transportation Advisory Committee, we had an, a different Transportation Committee before this. And we were scheduling a focused select board meeting, which was going to be held in October. And we canceled that um, because instead we redid the whole committee. And I'm really delighted. I think you're really going in the right direction now. I would like to reschedule that focused meeting for 
the select board to hear from you folks. And I don't know if March would be too soon, the middle of March. And the reason I bring that up is because at the last meeting, we talked about 90, a 90 day um, accelerated process. I forget what you called it exactly. I'm just wondering if you think you might have some recommendations or even some goals and values or a direction um, by the middle of March. And I would, I would say we better. <laughs> So, okay. So I would, uh, I was thinking I was, the same thing, well, Nick. <laughs> yeah, if we don't get rid of us. So, so yeah, I, no, I think that's what we need to work on for the next month or so, and um, and that is why we need to have, you know, meetings every other week. So yeah, I, I think put it on the calendar, uh, and then uh, we'll track progress with you, and we'll you know we'll be doing that at the meeting, so we can judge together how it's coming together. That's fantastic. And I totally understand that you're not going to solve everything on earth by then. But if you have some direction, you know, you're moving along and you're this far on uh, topic A and you haven't started on topic B, topic C is a big priority, topic D isn't. That's the kind of thing that we really need to hear and have a dialogue with you. So I'll pencil it in and keep my fingers crossed. Thank okay, you. I'm, I'm going to revise a little bit the, the uh, slideshow I made. If you want to use that with, or discuss it with the select board, or uh, you know, if they want to no, do I'm anything, going to, I'm going to wait till March. What okay, I want to do is have a whole bunch of transportation topics. That would be our only agenda item on the select board. We'd spend the whole evening with you and the public uh, talking about all these different transportation items. So that okay. was one of them. And there could be as many of them as you're ready to do. Okay, Okay. thank you, Terry. Uh, Bill, thank you. Show. Uh Yeah, thank you. Uh, I just want to, oh, first of all, let me thank all the people who gave me credit for the work on the reformatory branch. Some people call it blame, but it depends on your point of view, I guess. Uh, I, one of my motivations on working on the reformatory branch was to develop uh, a way for me to bicycle as a senior. Uh, and also to get my grandchildren when they visit to be able to have some place to bike. Concord really is not a good place to bicycle. Not, not anybody's fault. It's just the way it's a historic town with all these different ways. Um, but, you know, one of my motivations was to develop the reformatory branch so that I could bike on and other people could as well. One of the ways I get around the rest of town is using the sidewalks. And I think that's probably a very important mode of transportation for anybody, kid, particularly kids going to school, say foods to school and that sort of thing. Uh, and I think we need to look, focus a bit on improving the sidewalks as a mode of transportation, not just for pedestrians, but for cyclists as well. I won't ride on most roads in Concord. It's just not safe. I don't feel safe. I wouldn't let my children or my grandchildren at this point ride on the roads in Concord. Uh, I insist they use the sidewalk because it's it, it just it's good for road bikers, but uh, not for people with uh, you know not full mobility, if you will, or the inability to judge the right thing to do in certain situations. So. I'd, I'd, I'd ask you to add sidewalks in there as well. It's on there. It's on our list, believe me. It's a very important one. Thank you. Mark Galis? Yes, thank you again, Nick. Um, no, just something else. Um, I, um, when there was a mention in passing about the, um, uh, you know, maybe it was with re, uh, Aaron said with respect to parking at Arrow. People that it's an MBA, MBTA thing, and it reminds me of this sort of general um, issue that the committee may want to consider in some to some degree, which is <clears throat> certain things related to laws, regulation, uh, traffic regulation, speed limits, how they can be set, um, uh, bicycle laws regarding cyclists and cycling, which I think are totally inadequate, outdated, and not enforced. Um, and um, things such as 
the accessibility at Toro Depot. So these are state issues, but we're, we're all voters as far as we know, I know in Massachusetts and some people in Concord are pretty influential. Mm -hmm. So I do not think we should as a town shy away from making recommendations or pushes that involve changes to state law. So I just wanna make that comment. We should, we should not shy away from that. It's, it's a dereliction of duty. Okay, thank you, Mark. Okay, anyone else? If not, I'll entertain a motion to adjourn. Someone? <laughs> Bill's raising his I'm hand. Sorry, Ned, Ned, you have your hand up again. I'm sorry, didn't see it. Hi, uh, Mr. Pappas, Ned Perry, 362 Bedford Street. Um, I'm a little surprised that you have not uh, gone further in the regional possibilities for transportation. Um, the uh, Envision 2030 actually mentioned several uh, different regional initiatives for transportation. And I truly hope that your committee will reach out to other communities uh, relative to that. And so that we have a, uh, uh, a good discussion within Concord about uh, re regional uh, transportation issues. Um, I don't, I, I see regional possibilities under 7C and uh, you spent a, uh, uh, a good half hour talking about uh, the reformatory branch as a possible transportation need, but you haven't really talking, spoken about any uh, regional shuttle bus or uh, other than the MBTA. And uh, there are lots of, uh, uh, lots of uh, transportation vehicles between the MBTA and our feet and our sidewalks. So um, hopefully uh, between Acton and Bedford and Maynard and uh, Lexington, uh, you will find that there are some regional interest for uh, for transportation. Thank you. Thank you, Ned. Yes, those were an important part of Envision 2030, and they are definitely on our list. Thank you. Well, where where are they on your list? Well, today we just listed them as a future topic of regional possibilities, as you mentioned. Oh, but there's no. But, you know, we, we haven't. We're, we're, Ned, we're trying to put together over the next few meetings. Uh, a broad statement of all the areas we're going to be looking into. So, you know, what you're asking good. for. That's we're just we're just too newborn, I guess. <laughs> so, another couple of meetings. I hope we begin to have that structure. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Phil. I have a question for Terry and a comment. Um, this is actually following on Ned's comment, uh, Terry. Um, can you let us know what the status of the um, agreement with Acton on the community connection bus project may be? Crosstown Connect, yeah. The Crosstown Connect, right. My understanding is that we are a dues paying member and I think we're spending $14,000 a year. However, we do not have any bus service with them because we have to provide the vehicle. And we've gotten stuck, um, if I'm recalling correctly, we've checked with the Council on Aging, we've checked with the schools, uh, we need to find a vehicle to use. So I'm not as up to speed on it as uh, Marsha Rasmussen, for example, um, but I do agree with Ned. I would really like this committee to investigate all of this type of stuff and figure out how can we get going on this? Um, what would it take? Can we use ARPA funding? We have $5.6 million coming in. Can we buy a vehicle with that? If not, what can we do? That, that I would love to see some regional transportation. Effort. Okay, thank you. So here's my here's my follow up to both comments, and that is, um, I I think we need to organize ourselves for some number of meetings. But then my hope is that we can let the staff know as early as possible that it would be really great if we could get the staff to come and provide input for us, so that we know what they're doing, what's on their you know uh, table, um, what they're proposing. Uh, so that our efforts aren't in the dark and we're working in harmony with the staff uh, 
so that we are each able to um, uh, inform our efforts and, and work together. Good, yes, agreed. Um, that might be especially useful uh, for Cross Con Connect. Maybe have Marsha or Elizabeth or someone from the planning department come and give us an update on those programs that they were at least involved in before the pandemic hit. I'm not sure where they are now. I can also reach out to the different um, people in planning and engineering and see what sort of things are going on and sort of get, um, see if I can sort of gather together a little, um, not that they're gonna think of everything that they're working on right now, but try to get a, a general idea of sort of things where they are, if there's, um, for instance, Crosstown Connect where, where it is. I know that it was paused during the pandemic. Um, things had been moving quickly and then, you know, slow to a screeching halt. Um, and I'm not quite sure where they've picked back up, but I can, I can certainly reach out to various departments and see um, how the, those things are going. Okay. Ned, again? Uh, Ned Perry, 362 Bedford Street. Uh, Ms. Ackerman told another committee earlier today that such requests like that have to go to the town manager in writing. So uh, uh, Mr. Pappas, if you have a request for other department information, then I suggest if you uh, speak to Ms. Ackerman, uh, you'll be told to send that request to the town manager for his evaluation or response. Thank well, you. Well, let me clarify. If, I mean, we have Aaron Stevens here and, and she can, it, it depends what type of request it is. At the Southern meeting, there was a long complicated request to produce more documents. Um, if you have a simple request, uh, I think Aaron can find out or someone can be here. Um, Aaron, Aaron was specifically Erin was specifically taking this assignment because she could do that sort of thing. Exactly. Yeah, for simple things at least. Thank you. Great. Glad to hear it. Nice to have other town staff do it too. Okay. Back to uh, anyone want to move to adjourn? I will if no one else will. <laughs> I'll move. Okay. The second. A second to adjourn? No? Okay, Phil? Okay. <laughs> we have to vote, I guess. Uh, let's see. Kathleen? Vote to Aye. adjourn. Um, Michelle? Aye. Uh, who else is here? Uh, Phil? Aye. Dan? Aye. And I'm an I as well. Did I miss anyone? I don't think so. Okay. Okay. Meeting adjourned. We'll uh, be posting the next one. Well, it's already in two weeks, so we'll see you back. Thank, Thank you. you. Great. Thanks.